Hello and welcome to the group room where we're at the 34th annual CTRC AACR San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. I'm very happy now to be joined by Professor Dr. Jose Basalga, the Division of Hematology, Oncology, and Associate Director of the Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center in Boston. You are also a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. And you are the star at this uh, San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. You've got some very exciting data to talk about. What have we got going for the HER2 negative metastatic patient? The work has been done on the estrogen receptor positive patients. So this is the group that we studied in Bolero 2. Now for patients with ER positive disease, these are the tumors that express estrogen receptors. The backbone of therapy is hormonal therapy. So classically we have anodic inhibitors, we have tamoxifen, we have fulbestrin. So these tumors are sensitive to hormones. Down the line though, once patients failed one line of therapy and then they go to second line and they fail second line, every time the benefit of therapy is shorter. And the biggest problem that we had for decades is the issue of endocrine resistance. Those tumors that did benefit from anti-estrogen therapy for a while but then stopped, stopped responding. And this was like the holy grail in my mind of therapy with ER uh, agents. We had made no inroads whatsoever in understanding and in applying the mechanisms of resistance to anti-estrogens. And here comes Everolimus. So uh, we had known for a number, I know, Affinitor is the name of the drug, the commercial name. Right, and it has a background as an anti, uh, an immunosuppressant Correct. agent. Correct. It's immunosuppressant, but the rolling cancer is another one. There is a very important target in the cell that's called mTOR. Now, that's not, uh, 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 you know, it's not uh, a god from Scandinavia. That's uh, <laughs> this name. mTOR stands for mammalian target of rapamycin. mTOR is a critical node that signals in the cancer cell. We Affinitor um, inhibits mTOR, so Affinitor prevents mTOR from working, if you wish. We had known for years that mTOR had the capacity to activate estrogen receptor and bypass the effects of anti-estrogens um, in, in experimental models. We knew that. So then the idea was served if mTOR is responsible maybe of not of resistance to anti-estrogens, why let's try to combine an mTOR inhibitor to block that with an anti-estrogen. And that's the basis behind Bolero. If it, the agent was originally used to prevent the rejection of organ transplants, right. how does the scientist know the component, the biological component where you even begin to put the pieces together to know that it could have efficacy um, in the, the breast cancer setting, is it because it has antiogenic anti properties? Because in the lab you can really dissect um, the multiple activities of mTOR inhibitors. So you can really, you, have, you can work in breast cancer models and you can clearly identify and separate the immunosuppressant effects, from the growth inhibitory effects, from the anti-estrogen effects, from the antiangiogenic. So we have models that are so good that we can manipulate them to our advantage to understand what is really going on, and this is what happened with mTOR. So we were able to identify in the lab that it did hit the ER-positive cells. It's quite brilliant. Yeah. It's, I mean, this is work by many people, and it's absolutely brilliant. I came to this absolutely fascinated. I, I, had, I understood nothing about mTOR, but when I saw it, I, I said, this is fantastic, and I was so attracted to this that I did the first in human trial with Everolimus, with Affinitor. I did the phase one study, and then I did the phase two study, and now I'm doing the phase three. And the more you know about the molecule and the concept, 
the more attractive it is. Uh, it's a critical mediator of the cell. Now it's combined with yet another drug, right? the aromasin. Right. And can you expand a little bit on, on, on how this combination works? works? Yes. Yeah. So we have the, in tumors that express the estrogen receptor, the estrogen receptor is what drives growth on those tumor cells. So it's the driver, right? For many, many years, the, the dominant way by which the estrogen receptor becomes turned on is by estrogen binding to the receptor. That's why it's called estrogen receptor, right? So the strategies that we devised, and by we I mean the community, were mostly to prevent either the production of estrogen, so if you don't have estrogen, you don't bind to the estrogen receptor, and you don't turn it on, that was a strategy. Or two, and that's the moxifen, let's prevent physically the binding of estrogen to estrogen receptor. So let's make like a physical blockade. And that works. And this now, is an aromatase inhibitor. The aromatase decreases the levels of estrogen that can bind to the receptor. So this works. Now, when a tumor stopped responding to aromatase inhibitors and to tamoxifen, we said that the tumor was estrogen receptor resistant. That is wrong. The tumor does not any longer respond to estrogen suppression, but the estrogen receptor continues to be working. And it's working via an alternative pathway. Something else mm -hmm. is activating that receptor. So you see, it was a misconception. These tumors are not estrogen receptor resistant. They are ligand, they are estrogen independent, which is something that occurs also in prostate cancer, it's the same principle. So then, the next thing is, well, if estrogens are not activating this receptor, mm -hmm. what's activating the receptor? And that's where mTOR comes in. So mTOR is perhaps the most important or one of the most important activators of the receptor that is not dependent on estrogen. So now, and the last component that we have to understand to see why the combination is so active. If you block mTOR, the receptor signals that mTOR is being blocked, and then estrogen signaling gains importance, and estrogen signaling rescues the cell from the deprivation of mTOR. So the cells have ways to adapt. This is like you have a car that is a hybrid, right? Mm -hmm. It goes by gas, it goes by, by electricity. Mm -hmm. You shut down the gas, no problem. The electricity kicks in. So this is a hybrid system. And the opposite is true. You block estrogen and mTOR goes up. So we identified that there was these adaptive responses that were playing against, uh, against the home, uh, 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 basically in favor of the cancer cell. Cancer cells are very smart. They have ways to reactivate. So that was the moment when the DA came, said we are not gonna make any headway until we block it together. And that was the basis. And then if you block them together, you're basically leaving the cancer cell without any repertoire um, to survive, and that is the principle behind this combination. And there are other aromatase inhibitors. How did you come to discover this was the correct combination? Well, I'm not sure this is the correct combination. I think, frankly, that this could apply to the other ones. This is, we use it, this one, because this is the uh, uh, inhibitor that is used most frequently in this clinical setting. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I am convinced, actually I'm sure, kind of sure, that this would apply to other uh, inhibitors. And we know for a fact that it also applies with tamoxifen. There was a small but very important French study that was at San Antonio last year called TAMRAT, in which they also combined Infinitor with tamoxifen, and they observed very similar data. So I think it's a universal thing. It's just the concept that blocking estrogen-dependent receptor activation and non-estrogen-dependent, the two things, that's a winning formula, if you wish. And what's interesting in, in, in reading the information, the word dual keeps coming up. Right. Dual attack, dual combination, right. and this word dual right. uh, 
duo right. is uh, very significant. Right. And that's going to be the way of the future. It's inconceivable to me that by just blocking one pathway, you're going to get rid of cancer. They are smarter than that. Uh, they, you, you have to attack more than one way, right? And that the concept of dual approach, yes. if you're smart about it, I mean, yes. if you're unlucky, and you can target two pathways that are important, uh, the results are much better. So Cleopatra is now going to be looking at the use in the adjuvant setting. What's the next phase for Bolero? Well, with Bolero, first of all, the Bolero results are also practice changing, okay? Because we almost, we more than doubled progression-free survival in patients that were in second, third line of therapy. So Bolero on its own, it's again practice changing right there. Uh, now with Bolero, we would love to go earlier in disease. Yes. We would love to go into the first line setting. And we would love to go into the adjuvant setting as well. So we are talking about that. But Bolero has another thing, if I may, that to me is even more appealing. And this is the first time that we break on estrogen resistance. So this is the first opening of the door, okay? So, and this has, you know, scientifically has tremendous power because that is telling us that this is the direction that we have to go. And I'm telling you, we have drugs that are even more exciting than the line. So now we have, PI3 kinase inhibitors that are perhaps better. We have dual, again, PI3 kinase mTOR inhibitors. Mm -hmm. We have AKT inhibitors. So with what we know now that this is functioning, I'm telling you, we're gonna have better drugs. We're gonna have better ideas. So I am very positive that this is gonna be a sea change in the way we do things in breast cancer. Thank you so much. I mean, you're the uh, lead investigator on all of this for uh, for taking the time, one, at such a busy San Antonio meeting to come and even talk to us, but the sense of, 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 of pride and just your passion and, and, and happiness must be quite overwhelming for you right now. I think it's, it's I mean, this has been the work of, of the community. I mean, there's been so many people working on this, and these trials, I mean, they've been so global. I mean, thousands of women from around the world. It's it's really a, a global effort, so it's it's a very good time, I think, for for all of us to celebrate this. Well, your reputation is, is wide and vast. You're a pretty famous guy, and you know, I've, I, it's been a real privilege working with you, former president of, of, of ESMO, and you're just one of these non-stop oncology researchers, and it's a real privilege to know you. Thank you. Professor Dr. Jose Basalga, Chief of the Division of Hematology, Oncology, Associate Director of the Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center in Boston, where you're also the professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School, and I know they must miss you a lot in Europe. Yeah, I miss them too, <laughs> but I go, I go very frequently. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sure. Professor Pasalga. Thank, Thank you.